Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at using Pareto analysis for problem solving. Now Pareto analysis is a problem solving or decision making tool that can help you choose the appropriate course of action to take when many options are available, but there isn't enough resources to pursue all of the options. Imagine that you're the leader of a small startup, so you have to make important decisions about how to invest your money and time. And obviously you want to invest that wisely, but how do you know which of your many ideas will lead your startup to the fastest growth? Well, this is an ideal situation to use Pareto analysis, and that analysis is going to show you which actions will likely bring the fastest growth to your business. Now, Pareto analysis is also known by several other names, including the law of the vital few, the principle of factor sparsity, the 80-20 rule, or even the Pareto principle. And the Pareto principle is named after Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, who observed in the 19th century that 80-20 distributions exist everywhere. So examples of the Pareto principle or the Pareto distribution include 80% of results come from 20% of the work, 80% of land is owned by 20% of the people, 80% of sales are attributed to 20% of customers, and 80% of wealth belongs to 20% of the people. So when exactly should you use a Pareto analysis? Well, it's useful when you're trying to decide between multiple options but are constrained by what's called factor sparsity. Now, factor sparsity is simply another way of saying that you have limited resources. So for example, you'll typically have more opportunities than you have the resources to pursue, or when investing, it'll be the same. You'll have more investment opportunities than you have financial means. Now, this factor of sparsity or constraints on your resources means that you have to prioritize. And it is in situations such as these where you have this factor sparsity and the correct path to take isn't clear that conducting a Pareto analysis can be really useful. So if you want to conduct your own Pareto analysis to solve a problem where you have multiple options available to you but not enough resources to pursue all of them, then you can follow this five step process. So step one is to simply identify and list out all of the problems you have. Step two is to identify the root cause of each problem. And that simply means finding the commonality between your problems. Step three is to score each of the options using some relative measure. Step four is to rank the items. And that simply means you tally up all of your scores. And step five is to take action so you address the root causes that are causing you the biggest problems first. So that's um, a little bit high level so let's jump in and have a look at an example so this makes a little bit more sense. So for this example imagine you are the new IT manager for an online retailer but your website keeps crashing. Now obviously it's essential that the problem is rectified as soon as possible but unfortunately there are many, many reasons why the website keeps crashing. So because of this, you decide to perform a Pareto analysis to determine the order in which to best fix your issues. So step one is to get a list of all the reasons the server is crashing together. And you can see that here in this image. Next, you want to find the root cause of each problem. So you can see we've performed that here and a good way by the way to find the root cause of your problem is to use the five whys technique and i'll include a link to a video about the five whys beneath this video if you want to learn more but you can see here for each item on our list we've identified the identified the underlying root cause of that problem now the next step you want to score each row in some way so here we decide to score each row from one to 10 based on how high the negative impact of this problem is. So 10 representing the biggest or worst impact on the business and one representing the least. 
And then finally, we want to add the scores together for each of the root causes. And again, you can see the results of doing that in this table here. So you don't have to do the step you can see here, but if you were to represent your results graphically, you would see that 80% of the impact is being caused by 20% of the causes. Now this is in general, because Pareto is, is a principle, it's not a rule, it doesn't always have, have to be that way. It could be that you find 90% of the impact is being caused by 10% of the causes, for example, or it could be that 60% is being caused by 40%. But as you can see here, the obvious first step in addressing your server problems is to actually invest in more robust processes and possibly some employee training to ensure that everyone knows how to follow these processes. So by addressing the root cause first, you will be addressing 55% of your negative impact in one step. Now, let's look at one more really simple example this time. Now, in this scenario, you're a student, you have an exam tomorrow morning, and so far you haven't studied at all. You don't have enough time left to revise everything. So how do you decide what you're going to study? Well, you guessed it, you're going to use a Pareto analysis and you do this Pareto analysis in your head. So the way you're going to do this is by comparing the last three years of exam papers and ranking the most common topics. So now you simply revise for your exam in order of how likely a topic is to appear in your exam tomorrow. Now, this approach isn't going to be useful for getting you an A grade but it will give you the best possible grade given the very limited time you have available to study. There are a number of advantages and disadvantages you should know about the Pareto principle or Pareto analysis. In terms of advantages, then it can help decision makers rank and understand which options to pursue when resources are limited. It prioritizes actions to ensure maximal benefit is delivered to the organization. So you do the most important things first. In terms of disadvantages, then the methodology provides no guidance on how to find the root causes of problems. So like I said, I will link to the video on the five whys beneath this video. And secondly, the 80-20 rule is a principle only and not an immutable law. So in practice, you might find that 40% of the causes result in 60 percent of the results, for example. So in summary, sometimes we need a tool to help us with our decision making to ensure we're applying our effort in the most useful way. Pareto analysis can be used to help you identify the appropriate course of action to take when resources are limited, but you have many options available to you. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to speaking to you again soon.